We mentioned uh, before the last commercial break about uh, the war on drugs, mm -hmm. and it's been a failure for whatever yeah. reasons. Um, our and jails are full yeah. of drug addicts, of drug dealers. Good things that have come out of it, and many bad things that have come out of it. And we saw the same thing with prohibition. You know, for for the good effects that came from it, the negative out effects severely outweighed it. And really, uh, alcohol in America took off when they when they made it illegal because of the people that were getting getting involved in it. Now the money that could be made by you know il uh, illegal distribution and manufacturing of it soared. So now there's a lot more motive to do it. Uh, with the price of, you know, with drugs that are illegal, there's just so much uh, profit to be made that there's huge incentives not only for uh, people in our own country to get involved in the manufacturing and distribution of it, but other countries. I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Are there any gateway, uh, gateway drugs really for opiates or do you just start with? I mean, <laughs> marijuana is not a gateway drug. Well, right? you know, and there's arguments to be made that it is and it isn't. I say that it is because I look at addiction as a behavioral thing. And this is why I say it's a gateway drug. Maybe not because of the chemical hooks in it, but say you're a 16 year old child, you've heard all your life that marijuana is terrible and it's gonna kill you and destroy your whole life uh, and stay away from it. And then you experiment and you try it once and you see that it doesn't, it doesn't destroy your life the first time. It's also, it's something that's illegal. So you know that you're breaking the law and you're not getting caught. So it's planting these seeds and it's demonstrating to a behavior that you can do something that's illegal that everybody says is terrible and is gonna destroy your life and you don't see consequences right away. In that aspect, I say it's very much a gateway drug because you're planting that seed that, you know, even more so I think than alcohol because alcohol is legal, it is socially acceptable, uh, much more than marijuana in, in many places, but, um, but somebody that experiments with that, they're also not, you know, breaking, well, they're breaking an underage drinking law, but they're not obtaining and, and holding a, you know, substance that's illegal. So I say it's a gateway drug because it's planting that seed that you can get away with this and you're not going to get caught and your life's not going to end. So it plants that seed that, well, everything else I must have heard about, it must be BS. Nobody knows what they're talking about. They're just trying to hold me down or they're just trying to keep me from doing something that I enjoy. So in that, it plants that seed for that behavior that it is something that you can get away with. And now, so, no, you know, going from never touching a drug to putting a, a heroin needle in your arm or taking a pill that somebody hands you that you're not really sure what it is, that's an enormous leap. But if you go from never touching a drug to taking a sip of beer and nothing bad happens to your friend gives you a joint and nothing bad happens, now you're a lot closer to doing something that's more extreme. You're kind of walking that, walking that line. So I say it's a gateway drug for that, not, maybe not because of uh, chemical hooks in the brain or anything, but behaviorally I say that it certainly is. They've legalized marijuana in Colorado. Have you studied the effects yeah, of so that, there, negative and positive? Right? Yeah, so there's two different approaches. So uh, Washington and Colorado um, both have, they've taken two, two different approaches. One is legalization. Colorado's gone legalization route. The other is decriminalization. So it's really two different approaches to, you know, to a similar end in, in mind. Legalization, the benefits of it is you tax it, you regulate it, um, and you can use that money to fund other things in the state uh, and, and fund the policing of other things that are still illegal. Decriminalization just means that you're not you know, you're not going to face the, the fines or the penalties. It's much more like a speeding ticket than, you know, than a, a possible jail sentence or huge fines. Um, and there was a district attorney that was interviewed in this book called Chasing the Scream that said, you know, she wasn't for it. She's very opposed to any kind of drugs. So she, was, she wasn't for the decriminalization. But when she looked at her, the amount of work that she does and the number of drug cases that she sees, she said there were other things like, th you know, thefts and domestic violence issues that were put before her that she never got to see that she had to dismiss or, or let go because she was spending all of her time focusing on these drug related offenses. And when you have a drug related offense for somebody who's young, for somebody who's pre, uh, pre adulthood and their adolescence or somebody who's 20 years old just trying to find their way in life, you get this permit, you know, you get this scarlet letter, you get this, this mark against you that's going to affect the rest of your life. You know, somebody who's really just finding who they are, our brains are still developing until we're 25 or 26 years old. We're still trying to find out who we are and what we want to do in life. You get this one drug charge when you're 20, 22, and now that permanently caps the, you know, the potential that you have and limits so many of your possibilities in the future. So she, she didn't think that was right. So she is a huge advocate for decriminalization. She doesn't want to make it legal. She doesn't want to make it at more available but decriminalization of it has many positive effects. And then Colorado went the other route and they legalized uh, the marijuana so that they could tax it and they could regulate it. And they've had, you know, they, everybody thought that marijuana use was gonna skyrocket and go, you know, but, it, but it doesn't, it didn't. You know, it it didn't, didn't skyrocket. 
I mean, there's a lot more people using it casually now, but they're not all just becoming addicts and sitting around their house smoking weed all the time. Just like not everybody in the world sits around and drinks alcohol from the time they wake up till they go to bed. And it's it's available. It's accessible some everywhere. Do, but some, some are do, doing yeah, that right. regardless. And some people, yeah, and there's some people that, are, that do smoke marijuana like that all the time. But just by making it available, and that's come back to my my position on it it's a behavioral thing just we got to look at the pain we got to look at the reason that somebody's trying to escape De- um making it illegal doesn't solve that problem making something illegal doesn't solve somebody's you know desire to use it desire to escape that pain or that void inside they're going to find some other way to do it we can make anything illegal to find other ways i mean look at hom- homeless people or uh that are or destitute people that have that are alcoholics. I mean, they don't have, they can't get alcohol, but they can get hand sanitizer, they can get mouthwash, they can get other things. They'll find some other way to avoid or escape that pain. So if we don't look at the human, if we don't look at coming from a compassionate place and look at why they're struggling, why they have the issues that they do, why they really need the help, and we only shame them and judge them and try to hold them down even more, it's only going to exacerbate the problem, make it worse. That's why it's spiraling out of control. That's why it's getting so much worse. All right. Well, we're about to run out of time. All All right. Right. Garrett, uh, you mentioned the fun- me fundraiser coming up. Anything I can do. Yeah. So we just did a fundraiser on Friday. We're still, we've got a capital campaign right now. We still need to raise $27,000 before we can open the door. If you can make any contribution, it'll be a huge help. And please reach out to me. I'll post my uh, contact information on this Facebook page and, and, uh, all right, realize and you guys can share it. website again one That's more right. time. Realizeyou252.org, and you can find us on Facebook as well. All right, folks, that's all we have for today. We'll see you next week.